Hey everybody, this is Captain Kyle and I'm here with the Shattered Glass Jet Fire. He's big, he's bad, and we're gonna find out if he's cool. Be right back. So I haven't even taken him out of the box yet, so let's go ahead and do that. And yes, while I'm here and mentioning it with this backdrop, I do look like Doc Ock. Fine. Hello, Peter. Now the Shattered Glass packaging is very cool, but what I really want to see is the bot inside. I probably could open it from the bottom. Might have been easier. So here he is inside the packaging. Everything's strapped in. He did come with a comic book. I read it. It's pretty good. And I'll have thoughts about that. But in the meantime, there's a lot of these things to cut. So after cutting all these strings are all over the place, fun. But what it comes with is the main figure, some blast effects, a chest protector, shield, bulletproof vest, I don't know. A huge gun that splits in twain. Talk about that later. And some additional guns slash missiles slash weaponry. And on his forearms, he does have additional guns. So he's pretty well armed for a former scientist. It does come with an instruction sheet. I probably won't need to refer to that because I have the other one, but it's nice to see where all the weapons go. Ha, huh, his head was turned around. There it goes. There's his face. So fully armed, he's got the chest shield. He's got the wing tip lasers got the things to shoot way up in the air. He's got a lot of guns hanging off of him. Forearm guns, the big gun that just happens to split in two, as I mentioned. You can always add some of the blast effects if you want to. I know a lot of people go gaga for blast effects, but I just kind of like my imagination. So we're going to put these aside. And I feel like the chest shield is way too bulky and it only has one symbol on it, so you can't really swap them back and forth. This is a huge guy. I like him. He's got this additional face mask, which snaps over his regular face and is kind of reminiscent of the original G1 toy. Now, for those who aren't aware, the original G1 toy was called Jetfire, but you're probably aware. And the cartoon character was called Skyfire. This was due to trademark and all kinds of copyright stuff. I don't even know the entire story, but it's nice that they have a little homage to the original. But I like him to have a more cartoon accurate face. Just my preference. So just like the original Siege Jetfire, this guy is big. Basically put him up against a G1 Devastator and he's laughing at him. He's got all these additional weapons, which again, odd for a scientist. Now the original Jetfire was actually pretty poseable. You could bend the knees, you could move the arms in various directions. Yeah, the legs had pretty good articulation. You could turn the head. This one, of course, using modern toy techniques is a bit better. You can twist the wrists, you can bend the elbows, you can move the arms off to the sides. He's got articulated fingers for goodness sake. He is spry enough to do a full Jean-Claude Van Damme. I don't know why he would, but he can put his right foot in. He can take his right foot out, put his right foot in, and he can shake it all about. So he can possibly get ready to do a crane kick from Karate Kid. See, crossing fandoms. And if you're familiar with the Siege toy, again, transforms exactly the same, all the same accessories, just he's evil. He does have the neat little ability to switch from Autobot to Decepticon, if he decides to change sides again. And apparently the shattered glass version of this character is similar to the G1, as in he was a scientist who worked with Starscream, but then decided after Starscream tried to recruit him for the Decepticon cause to go with the Autobots. However, very similar to the regular continuity, he's more of a scientist, more of a gentle soul. He doesn't really like the way that the evil Autobots are doing things and kind of changes sides. I don't want to spoil the comic for you, but there's a reason he's got multiple symbols. But all the weaponry, he's a very cool figure. If you liked the Siege regular version, you'll like this one. Though the weapons fall off sometimes. Now the gun, as I mentioned, does split in two and you can switch the handles and pull out a handle for this one so he can carry a gun in each hand and be like, say hello to my little friends because I'm sure they saw that movie on Cybertron. The dark purple and black color scheme definitely contrasting with the normal white and red definitely gives him a more evil feel. Definitely more of a stealth, though rather huge stealth jet. He's got heels, just like 
the original and he's got the ankle joints so he can basically spread his legs into all kinds of more dynamic poses. So I'm digging the color scheme for an evil version of this character, but just like the one in Siege, sometimes things flip out and you don't really notice. He's got a lot of moving parts. Let's check out the jet mode. And this whole thing with, uh, and this is with the original as well, these don't always lock into place. You try to lock him into place, but it's very easy to almost detach the wrist entirely. So not a big fan of that. All right, as I mentioned, jet mode. So here he is in jet mode. Again, very large jet, fly around, heavily armed. You can move his fins. His wings can slide kind of, but they're kind of locked into place. Very reminiscent of the G1 version that was on the TV show, not the actual toy, which was from the Robotech Macross line and caused all kinds of headaches for our dear friends over at Hasbro. But a solid jet, lots of moving parts to put exactly into place. It's not the most difficult transformation, but it is kind of a pain in the ass. Still a cool jet. Now all his additional weapons, his chest shield and such, becomes this kind of like battle platform. And if you really want, you can plunk that on there so he's even more armed. I did put the blast effects in for the engines, which are pretty clever how these engines hook into engines that are hidden inside the legs. But overall, if you liked Siege Jet Fire, you're gonna like at least the mold. If you like the Shattered Glass storyline, which again, he basically was not happy with the way that the evil Autobots were doing things. And in the end of the comic, if you don't want spoilers, click away now. He ends up grieving over Starscream and kind of teaming up a bit with Megatron. So it's cool, it's large, and again, a lot more posability, a great shattered glass addition. Is it worth it? I mean, if you aren't into the whole shattered glass thing, I'd say skip it. But if you do like the Shattered Glass storyline, you could even put him up against his good self if you want to do something like Doctor Strange and the Madness of Multiverses or Multiverse Madness or, you know, Sonic the Hedge. I don't know, but if you want to give him no way home. But overall, I'd say it's a good toy. I like the Shattered Glass storyline, which a lot of people think that the whole alternate universe thing came from Star Trek originally with their Mirror Mirror episode way back in the original series. They actually got that from a DC comic where they had the Justice League find another world with an evil Justice League. So there you go. So these may still be available on Hasbro Pulse. You can check there. I'll also put a link down in the description if you want to check out eBay. He does sell for $91.99 on Hasbro Pulse. So not exactly the cheapest of figures, but definitely a conversation piece. And a great evil or heroic warrior for your Autobots or Decepticons. I will probably just put him in robot mode next to his good version and they'll just do the Spider-Man pointing thing. So that's what I have for you today. That is the Shattered Glass Jetfire. I think it's cool. If you think so, go ahead and get yourself one. Hope this helps you out. And while you're waiting to either get or not get this particular figure, we've got other videos. You can do the subscribe thing, the like, so other people can enjoy this video. The more likes, the more enjoyment is spread. You can comment too. Anyways, we'll see you next time. As always, have fun. Good hunting.